Hello and welcome back. In the last video, we learned how to inoculate spawn. In this video, we'll cover how to make substrate and spawning to bulk with shoeboxes. This is the last step before we begin fruiting. It's been a good time, but we're almost to the end. This video is part of a series, so if you haven't seen the previous videos, you should watch them before watching this. Let's get started with substrate and how to prepare it. You'll need cocoa coir. It comes in different forms, chunks and fibers. For mushrooms, we want fibers. It comes in bricks and bags. I like the bricks, but the bags are just as good, but can cost a little more. You can find cocoa at most pet stores if they have a reptile section. You want to avoid brands that add microbes, usually for gardening, so make sure to check the package if you're unsure. You'll also need vermiculite. Technically, it's optional, but I think it's beneficial to use. It comes in different sizes. I've found the ones that are fine or a little bigger to be better. You'll need a five gallon bucket with a lid. Add one brick or eight quart bag of cocoa to the bucket. Next, add two quarts of vermiculite. I'm using a one quart measuring cup, so I'll be adding two. Next, we need to boil some water. For this specific situation, one brick and two quarts of vermiculite, I add 17 cups of water or four quarts plus one cup. It's a little extra to make sure it all gets hydrated. The bricks can vary in weight, which can throw the recipe off. I'd rather it be too wet than too dry. If it's too dry, you'll have to hydrate it or it can negatively impact the yield or even the success of your grow. If it's overhydrated, you can simply squeeze the excess out before you use it. So in a pot with a lid on a stove, bring the water up to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, carefully pour it into the bucket and put the lid on it. And now we want to let it sit until it cools off to room temperature. This will take about eight hours. Once it's cooled all the way off, it's pretty much ready to use. It just needs to be mixed up before you use it. To begin, we need to mix the substrate up. The substrate on the bottom of the bucket is going to be more saturated than the substrate on top of it, so we need to mix it up well. I recommend wearing gloves and sanitizing them before you begin. Just adding water to the bucket doesn't mix it up very much. We want the vermiculite as evenly spread out in the cocoa as possible. The vermiculite adds some aeration to the cocoa and makes it easier for the mycelium to colonize it. Make sure to get everything on the bottom mixed up. There can be pockets of just vermiculite. So once it's all mixed up, we can move on. Now that the substrate is mixed up, if you overhydrated it like I do, you need to squeeze out the excess water. I use an empty container to squeeze the sub over to catch the water. And then I put the substrate into a measuring cup. So I have somewhat of an approximate idea of how much substrate I'm using. I'm going to use about two and a half quarts of substrate per shoe box. I portion out the substrate before I actually spawn anything, so I don't have to do this while I'm actually spawning the bulk. When you squeeze the substrate, you want to squeeze it until only a few drops come out of the substrate. We don't want the substrate to be too saturated because this can inhibit the mycelium from colonizing it. If the substrate is too saturated, it can create an anaerobic environment that some contaminants will prefer. So make sure you squeeze it until only a few drops come out. Also make sure any clumps are broken up. We will need some shoe boxes to spawn this grain. I'm using six quart Sterilite shoe boxes. You can get these containers in various sizes. The 12 quart is another popular choice. You can find them at Walmart and on Amazon. I use the six quart because I like my substrate to be thicker and in the 12 quart it would be thinner. The choice is up to you. Next, we can talk about liners. They aren't 100% necessary, but I think they're beneficial and they make cleanup quick and easy. Most normal trash bags will do. Try to get brand new rolls or a box if you can, just so they start off with them being relatively clean versus something that's been sitting around collecting dust. Once you have the trash bags, you'll need some scissors to cut the bag with. I cut the sides and opening, but I don't cut the bottom of the bag so it opens up as long as possible. This way you can get the maximum amount of liners per bag. 
The size of the liner will depend on the container, but I like them to go a decent amount over the walls of the shoe box. It makes it easier to do the spawning process without making a mess under the liner. Once you have it cut out, you can use a spray bottle with water in it on a fine mist to help the liner stick to the shoe box. It can be very annoying if the liner is too small because it will fall down. Thinner bags work better and they stick to the substrate better when it shrinks during later flushes. Now we can get to it. Get your shoe box with the liner in it ready to go. First we'll add the substrate to the shoe box. You want to save a little bit of the substrate to put on top when we're done for a pseudo casing. More on that when we get there. I recommend sanitizing the outside of the spawn bag or jars before handling it or adding it to the shoe box just to reduce the amount of potential contamination. Make sure to break the spawn up as good as you can before cutting the bag open. This step is the end of sterility, but I recommend keeping everything sanitary all the way up until harvest. I don't touch anything with my bare hands. Every time I mess with my grows, I always wear gloves and I sanitize them. It might be overkill, but that's just how I am. Once the bag is sanitized, we can cut the top off with a pair of sanitized scissors. Once it's open, we can dump the spawn into the shoe box on top of the substrate. Make sure to break any clumps of spawn up as much as possible. We want to spread the spawn out in the substrate as best we can. You don't want it all to go to one side. The better it's spread out, the better it will colonize the substrate. This will also help with getting more even flushes or mushroom development, but it's not the only factor that determines the consistency of flushes. Genetics and environmental conditions will also have a huge impact on this. Using your hands, mix the substrate and the spawn up. Be careful not to pull the liner down and make sure it all stays in the shoe box. If anything gets outside of the shoe box by accident, I would not put it back in. There's no telling what could be on the surface of whatever table or surface you're doing this on. Once everything is all mixed up, I like to pack it down lightly and make sure the surface of the substrate is as level and even as possible. You don't want holes or pits or areas where water can collect and make puddles. It's important that it's as level as possible. Once you're satisfied, we can add the substrate we saved from the beginning. For this size of shoe boxes, I use about half a quart of substrate for the pseudo casing. The pseudo casing helps keep the moisture in a little better and it also covers up any spawn that might be exposed. The casing doesn't have to be really thick. You don't want it to be too thick so about a quarter to a half inch tops for the pseudo casing. Once it's all spread out, we want to pack it down. Don't pack it down as hard as you can, but you want it to be firm. If you pack it too tight, it could make it hard for the mycelium to colonize it. Once it's all leveled out and packed down, you can cut the excess liner off. I like it to be short enough that I can see inside through the side of the shoe box. That way I can check on it by looking through the side versus having to open it to look at it. You really want to open the shoe boxes as little as possible until it's time to harvest. Depending on your environment, opening the shoe box can wreck the microclimate inside the shoe box. This can have a negative effect on primordia formation. Mycelium likes consistency. Every time you open the shoe box, it will drop the humidity level in the shoe box temporarily. Once you cut the liner out, make sure to pack everything back down as messing with the liner can loosen up the substrate. Once it's packed down, we can put the lid on it. I use scotch tape to label my shoe boxes. I put the strain and date that I spawned on the tape. And that's it. That's how you spawn to bulk with the shoe box. I grow mushrooms in a tent that I have humidity control in. You don't have to have a tent, but if your environment has low humidity, the substrate might dry out before pens start to grow. I would recommend getting a tent if you have low humidity. They come in all different sizes and setups. I have a four by eight foot tent, but they make much smaller ones. Martha tents are an affordable option and you can make fruiting containers with large 60 quart or plus size plastic totes. If you try growing in a low humidity environment, you might end up having to mist the substrate frequently to maintain proper moisture content. Misting, tents, and fruiting containers are all part of fruiting, so I'll talk about them in the next video, which will be the final video of this series. For these shoe boxes, I mix approximately two quarts of substrate with three fourths of a quart of spawn, and then I add half a quart of substrate on top for the pseudo casing. So each shoe box is two and a half quarts of substrate mixed with three fourths of a quart of spawn. 
You can increase the amount of substrate, but I would not decrease the amount of substrate. The mycelium needs a certain amount of moisture to perform optimally. So if you use too little, you can end up with small mushrooms and bad overall performance. Two and a half to three quarts of substrate is the minimum I would use with three fourths of a quart of spawn. I wouldn't go too high with the substrate either. About five quarts is as high as I would go. And that's it. Now we just have to wait for the mycelium to do its thing. In the next video, I'll cover fruiting. We'll go over colonization, primordia and pen formation, when to harvest, rehydration for the next flush. I'll talk about fanning and misting a bit. We'll talk about the timeline or how long it takes, when to harvest, and we'll talk about contamination during fruiting. I'm not going to do a harvesting video because YouTube always takes them down. I'm finally in good standings with YouTube, so I don't want to get any more strikes. And that's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks everyone for watching and being supportive. Hope to see you in the next video.